1988. Video game promoter Hank Rogers of Bulletproof Software is at a convention promoting the game Geo, described as chess but harder. Nobody appears to have an interest in it, and the young lady he hired to help promote it has her attention diverted to a different game. Hank approaches the booth for Tetris, and despite his reservations, he immediately becomes hooked on the game. Hank later goes to a bank manager named Eddie. He tells Eddie how obsessed he has become with Tetris and that he is now the licensee for PC, game console, and arcade rights to Tetris. Hank then tells Eddie about the history of Tetris, beginning with its creator, Alexei Pajitnov. Four years earlier, Alexei worked as a programmer for the Russian government but developed games on the side. With help from some co-workers, Alexei was able to turn Tetris from something simple, using falling parentheses instead of the popular colored blocks, to something more colorful, spreading its popularity. Two years after that, Robert Stein of Andromeda Software discovered Tetris since he would go around Europe buying game properties for cheap and turning a profit by selling them stateside. Stein would pester Alexei's bosses until they took the licensing request to Elorgy. Stein would later travel to London to meet billionaire media tycoon Robert Maxwell of Mirrorsoft and his snooty son Kevin for an international licensing deal in exchange for Stein receiving royalties. Hank continues his story by telling Eddie that the previous day, he went to Nintendo HQ in Japan to meet with CEO Hiroshi Yamauchi. Hank shows Tetris to Yamauchi, who is impressed with it. Despite receiving an initial $500,000 offer for a buyout, Hank turns it down in order to form a partnership with Yamochi by convincing him that them working together is comparable to Mario and Luigi or Zelda and Link. Hank then asks Eddie for a $3 million loan for Nintendo cartridges and arcade consoles. Eddie agrees once Hank agrees to increased interest rates and putting his house down as collateral. At his apartment in Tokyo, Hank talks to his wife Akimi. She expresses concerns over his deal until Hank points out that their kids are so into Tetris that the house is quiet. His eldest daughter, Maya, is especially absorbed by it. Hank speaks on the phone to Kevin, who tells him that he and his father already sold arcade rights to Sega in Japan. Hank becomes angry and returns to Nintendo to speak to Yamauchi and ask for residuals in advance. Yamauchi invites Hank to meet with his colleagues in Seattle. Hank travels to Seattle to meet with Nintendo's president, Minoru Arakawa, and VP Howard Lincoln. They reveal to him the Game Boy, the hot new handheld console that is set to be released with Super Mario Land, but Hank convinces them it should be packaged with Tetris instead, and he tells them he will acquire handheld licensing rights. Hank then flies to London to meet with the Maxwells, who are already in a heated meeting with Stein after he confronts them about not receiving his payment. Hank requests to buy the handheld rights, but does not get a clear response from the Maxwells. After Hank and Stein leave, Kevin asks his father about money missing from employees' retirement funds, but Maxwell dismisses the questions and focuses on acquiring Tetris. On their way out, Hank and Stein seemingly make a deal for the handheld rights. Arakawa and Lincoln call Hank to let him know that Stein is selling handheld rights to Atari for $100,000 as payback to the Maxwells for not paying him. Hank resolves to travel to Moscow himself to go to Elorg and get the rights himself despite Arakawa and Lincoln telling him the dangers of going to communist Russia. Upon arriving in Moscow, Hank meets a young woman named Sasha, who becomes his translator. She guides him to Elorg, despite her warnings that he could get in trouble for walking in without an invitation. They meet Elorg president Nikolai Belikov, and Hank begins to explain his business to Belikov. From Sasha's translations, Hank learns that Elorg only licensed PC rights and not console or handheld. Hank presents Belikov with a personal copy of Japanese Tetris, but Belikov believes it is an illegal copy. Despite Belikov's orders to leave, Hank convinces him to meet again to discuss the conditions of the deal. On their way out of Elorge, Hank is approached by shady KGB men and told to leave the country. Kevin arrives in Moscow and meets with Valentin Trifonov, a member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party and head of Department of Foreign Trade. Due to the Maxwell's connections to Mikhail Gorbachev, they believe they have an easier way in to acquiring Tetris. The next day, Hank and Sasha return to Elorg, where they meet Alexei for the first time, along with Trifonov and his men. Trifonov accuses Hank of illegal practices, such as showing up with a tourist visa when it's false, while Alexei also does not immediately trust Hank's intentions. Belikov tells them that the arcade rights to Tetris were never sold to anyone, 
Stein and Kevin also separately arrive to try and meet with Belikov while Hank looks over the contract that was signed, determining that Stein stole arcade rights. Belikov gives Stein a new contract over the handheld rights. Alexei then gives Hank and Sasha a ride home. Kevin meets with Trifonov again, as he finds out they were spying on his meeting with Belikov. Trifonov acknowledges to Kevin that communism in Russia will soon come to an end, and he wants to make good on their deal as well. Behind Kevin's back, Trifonov is being bribed by Maxwell into helping secure Tetris. That night, Hank visits Alexei's home and has dinner with him and his wife Nina. While Nina initially thinks Hank really did steal Tetris, he proves to them that he is honest with his intentions. Alexei then shows him the original version of Tetris and lets Hank play. They then hear a knock on the door, fearing it is KGB looking for Hank, so Alexei and Nina hide him. After seeing it's just a neighbor asking for salt, Alexei tries to get Hank to leave, but Hank gets him to go out with him so they can continue to talk. Alexei takes Hank to a club with others who wish for independence from the Soviet Union. They all party and dance to the final countdown, and Hank starts to bond with Alexei. Unfortunately, the KGB has been spying on Hank and taking photos, leading them to find his family and threaten Akam and the kids at her workplace for Hank to return home. Other KGB goons find Hank and assault him and steal his pants, because they're Levi's. He returns to his hotel room and finds it ransacked before Sasha arrives. She tells him why the KGB is after him and tries to urge him to walk away, even unexpectedly kissing him before Hank reminds her he is married. Trifonov later encounters Alexei with his sons Dmitri and Peter, implicitly threatening Alexei with the same fate as his father. Meanwhile, Hank calls Akimi and tells her to contact his lawyers. Hank and Stein both return to Elorg separately. Stein complains to Belikov about the new contract, but relents and signs. Hank confronts Belikov over everything that has been going on, and tries to make a new deal for $25,000 in royalties up front, and 25 cents for every copy of the game sold since Hank is broke and desperate. He estimates that Tetris could sell as much as 20 million copies, which would net Belikov $5 million. Belikov then meets Trifonov outside, who says that Tetris will go to Mirosoft. The two then meet with Kevin, with Belikov saying that Mirosoft can have Tetris if they are wired $1 million within a week. Belikov then privately talks to Hank about making his own offer within the week and giving him a letter of intent to sign. Hank is met by Alexei, who rides with him via taxi so they are not followed. Alexei tells Hank what happened to his father. He was a university professor who signed a letter of protest for his colleague that was jailed for selling his book abroad, and it ruined Alexei's father's career. He then shows Hank that Sasha is a KGB agent who has been specifically going after him for his perceived threat, and they see her talking to Trifonov. Alexei then brings Hank to an airport. Hank misses Maya's school concert even after he promised he would be there. Meanwhile, Maxwell meets with Arakawa and Lincoln to ensure Mirosoft gets Tetris, and Trifonov has one of his men assault Belikov per Maxwell's orders. Back at his apartment, Hank receives a fax saying he's being dropped from the Tetris deal, as well as a threatening photo of Sasha kissing him that could be shown to his family. Akimi and Maya arrive, with Akimi chastising Hank for missing Maya's concert, but he shows more concern for losing the deal and everything they have, causing Maya to run to her room and cry. Belikov visits Alexei at his apartment. He tells Alexei that Tetris will go to Mirrorsoft, and Belikov will be removed from head of Elorg unless Alexei can make things right. He gives Alexei a letter of intent to fax to Hank, which he does at his job. At the same time, Kevin finds his father shredding documents, and when he asks for the $1 million needed to give to Elorg, Kevin says that they don't have that money. After Hank receives the letter, he returns to Nintendo to confront Arakawa and Lincoln to show them the letter. Hank then finds out that Atari stole Nintendo's patent and is selling Tetris cartridges. Hank says Stein and the Maxwells lied and that the letter expired the day before, meaning Atari has zero rights to Tetris. Hank convinces Arakawa and Lincoln to return to Moscow with him to make their deal official before the Maxwells do anything more. Alexei discovers he has been fired from his job and finds people repossessing his items. He also finds Trifonov talking to Dmitri and Peter, making more implied threats to throw them over a ledge. Trifonov contacts Maxwell to continue their dealings with Sasha finding Trifonov trying to work things out in his own favor against the interests of the country. Afterward, Stein confronts the Maxwells by punching Kevin in the face for going to Moscow and trying to make the Elorg deal behind his back, 
screwing him out of his payment. Maxwell reads the documents and makes plans to head to Moscow with Kevin to personally speak to Gorbachev to work against Hank. Upon his return, Hank goes to find Alexei, who does not want to see him due to everything he has lost by working with Hank. Not far from them, Trifonov and his goons catch wind of Hank's return and rush to Elorg. The Maxwell show up to Elorg first for their deal until Hank, Arakawa, and Lincoln show up. Maxwell orders Belikov to sign until Hank figures that the Maxwells have no money to pay Elorg with. Belikov sees through the lies and refuses to sign. Maxwell tries to attack him, but Belikov delivers a well-deserved headbutt to his face. Belikov signs with Nintendo and orders the trio to leave Moscow immediately. Trifonov confronts Maxwell revealing his dealings in front of Kevin and Sasha after realizing they lost the contract. Hank returns to his apartment in Tokyo and creates a makeshift stage for Maya to make up for missing her concert. He apologizes to her in Japanese, and she puts on the show for him while he watches with Akimi. He also shows her the check for $5 million to Bulletproof Software. Later on, the Game Boy is released with Tetris, which sells out twice in Japan before it arrives in the United States. Gorbachev resigns, and borders are being opened up around Europe. Hank sends Alexei his own copy of the Game Boy. Sometime after that, Alexei and his family move to the United States, where they are met by the Rogers family. Hank and Alexei greet each other with a hug. The ending text states that Hank Rogers and Alexei Pajitnov worked together to form the Tetris Company. Robert Stein continued to license games, but never got over his loss of Tetris. Robert Maxwell stole over $900 million from pension funds and racked up over $5 billion in debt. Kevin would later be arrested in connection with the thievery, and he declared bankruptcy and was later acquitted of fraud. In 2014, Hank appointed Maya as the new CEO of Tetris. With over a billion units sold, Tetris remains one of the most popular games of all time.